Welcome to Nick's Noob. In this video, we're going to discuss the Windows 11 unsupported hardware disclaimer and what you can do about it if you see it. And so basically, there is a saying that when God shuts a door, he opens a window. When Windows shuts a door, install Linux. Show Windows the door. <laughs> <laughs> and seriously, if you're seeing that error, uh, the best thing you can probably do if you don't want to go out and buy a new PC um, just to get Windows 11 is to install Linux on your system. And I've got a video on how to do that, and I will link to that in the show notes and also at the end of this video. Um, basically, it, it shows you how to create a bootable Linux thumb drive in Windows and then boot into that without having to install it on your computer so that you can try it out. Um, but so this is the, uh, this is the disclaimer that people have been seeing. And basically it says this PC doesn't meet the minimum system requirements for running Windows 11. These requirements help ensure a more reliable and higher quality experience. Installing Windows 11 on this PC is not recommended and may result in compatibility issues. If you proceed while with installing Windows 11, your PC will no longer be supported and won't be entitled to receive updates. Damages to your PC due to lack of compatibility aren't covered under the manufacturer's warranty by selecting a except you are acknowledging that you read and understand the statement. And uh, that's just crazy. We're not going to give you updates and your your war warranty is void. Uh, so let me go to my show notes here. Let's just go to this only and pull up my show notes. Um, so basically, this is just the disclaimer that I just read. Um, and then I did a AI search, just uh, asked AI what telemetry data Microsoft collects on you. And I'm not going to go over that here, but I could link to this, link to this in the show notes as well. But basically, Microsoft is doing a lot of telemetry, you know, collecting a lot of telemetry data in the background. There's a new thing. I don't know if you've heard of it called Microsoft Recall. And my guess is this is probably one of the reasons that they're wanting you to buy a new company computer to run Windows 11. And this is basically uh, a program that uh, takes screenshots of your computer all the time and what you're doing and audio recordings, etc., and processes it with AI and allows you to ask your computer, you know, what, what did I do on Tuesday, etc. Um, and, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that's probably the real reason they want you to upgrade just to or buy a new computer just to run their latest OS. Um, this is a history of computer operating systems and, um, windows is over here. Um, I could zoom in on this. Let me, let me just zoom in on this so we can see it, uh, open that and default app. And then we will just zoom in. So you've got windows over here, MS DOS 1981, windows 3.X 1995. And then you've got Windows 95 and, you know, Windows ME, XP, Windows 7, Windows 10. Um, and this isn't a complete list. And then on the other side, Linux side, you've got Unix, which started in 1971. And then that branched into BSD and into Minix that inspired Linux. Um, and then Linux... Uh, turned into Android and Fire OS and um, Slackware, Debian, Red Hat, Gen 2, Arch. These are all distros. Um, and we'll talk about what that means in, in another video. Uh, basically, the whole computer system, the the desktop manager, the, you know, the kernel, the package manager, that's what makes up a distro. You could run any desktop pretty much on any of these, you know, distros, but they're going to come with a default desktop. Um, Debian turned into Ubuntu and also Raspberry Pi and then Linux Mint, which runs the Cinnamon desktop. So there's all these options. All of these are Linux. You could install any one of these on your old system that won't run that won't run Windows 11 or that's not supported. You could also, you know, install BSD if you wanted to go this route. NetBSD, you know, some good operating systems there too. Um, 
And basically everything on the Linux side is very similar as far as the terminal and how it works. And you can run KDE or yeah, KDE Plasma Desktop on BSD if you wanted to, or GNOME Desktop, etc. Um, so I know this is all probably confusing. I'm trying to like I want to keep this simple. <laughs> Here's the release cycle that I did. Um, and this is Obsidian, by the way. I'll I'll do a video on Obsidian in the future, but great, great program. Like here I'm just making a uh, Gantt chart with milestones by just typing in some text. And then, you know, this is uh, using Mermaid to produce this chart. So type in some text, get a pretty chart. But <laughs> this is showing Windows 95, 98. Um, and pretty much, you know, if memory serves me correctly, pretty much every one of these wanted you to buy a new computer every time um, there is a major Windows upgrade. They want you to buy a new computer. And here's um, this is Debian. And you can see there's a new release like every two years. Um, and here's Ubuntu. Same thing. New release every two years. Um, every one of these going from 1604 to 1804 on old hardware my computer just got better and faster going to this one. My computer, like every major release, it just gets better and faster. And that includes on, that's including on old hardware. I've never once had to buy a new computer so that I could run the newest, you know, Linux distro. My old computer just got faster. And that's the way it should be. Plus, this is all completely free. Um, this is just a zoomed in view of uh, the Windows versus Debian, starting with Vista instead of going all the way back to uh, 95. But anyway, enough of enough of this. Um, I did put in here, why should you install Linux on older hardware? And um, let's just pull up a, I haven't filled this in yet, so let's just go create this real quick. Um, I'm just gonna go to run Olama llama and currently 3.2 is the latest one i have installed oh a llama run <laughs> a llama run 3.2 all right and uh oh uh my bad hold on a llama list and that's uh llama with two l's my bad um so i'm just gonna go back and tell it to run llama 3.2 there we go um, tell me why I should run Linux on old hardware and format as markdown. So this is just ask, asking AI uh, why I should install Linux on old hardware. And I'm going to... Um, just copy this into Obsidian because we asked that to format that as Markdown. So this should just come in right here. There we go. So I'll get rid of this. Running Linux on old hardware benefits and advantages. Um, so reusing old hardware with a modern operating system like Linux can be a cost-effective, environmentally friendly solution. Here are some benefits of running Linux on old hardware. Cost savings. No need to buy new hardware. Uh, you don't need to purchase expensive new hardware to get the latest and greatest technology. Upgrade existing hardware. Old hardware can often be upgraded with newer components such as RAM or hard drives to breathe, uh, breathe new life into it. That's very true. If you've got a Windows machine <clears throat> and you've got a lot of old pictures and stuff on, on the hard drive, um, a small investment in a new hard drive not only will make the computer faster, but also then you can just pull the old hard drive out that's got all your stuff on it, put in the new hard drive, install Linux on your new hard drive, and then um, you don't run any risk of losing any of your old data. You still got on that drive. You plug that drive back in and you're running Windows again. If you decide you like Linux, you can get a little USB device that allows you to plug your computer, your hard drive into that, um, and then just drag and drop all your files into your into Linux. Um, you can also just install Linux um, alongside Windows, and it'll repartition Windows and you know make space for Linux, and then set you up with a dual boot system. And in that, you'll be able to access all your Windows, uh, all your Windows files, and all your pictures and documents and stuff from Linux, and dual boot. 
Um, environmental benefits, you reduce electronic waste by rep repurposing old hardware, you reduce uh, the amount of electronic waste sent to landfills, a lower carbon footprint, the production and disposal of new electronics require energy and resources, which can contribute to a higher carbon footprint. Uh, customization and control tailor the system to your needs. Linux allows for extensive customization. Um, secure by default. Many li Linux distros come with security features that are designed to be dis uh, secure by default, reducing the risk of malware and other security threats. Community support. That's what this is. If you have any questions, feel free to email nicksnoob50 at gmail.com or just post a comment in the video and I will try to help you. Um, but there are also a lot of forums and support online support available for newbies running Linux. Um, large library of software. Um, there's a ton of free software for Linux. If you want an office suite, you don't have to go buy a new office suite. Um, you can just install LibreOffice or on, you know, star office. Um, same thing with all the software, all the software you can, you know, that you need, you can get for free. Um, and it's kept up to date. Um, just for example, if I go to um, Office, here's LibreOffice. This is what Office um, LibreOffice Writer looks like, which would be uh, basically the same as Word. Um, very similar. It'll read and write Word documents. If I just go File, Save As... I can save to ODT is the default, which is open uh, document type or text. <laughs> um, and that's a standard that a lot of other open source op uh, office programs will read and write to as well. But then we've got DocX, we've got um, Word 2007, Word 2010, um, we've got um, Word 97 doc format as well. We can write to doc book, um, so lots of lots of options. Same thing with their spreadsheet. Uh, if I go open uh, Office uh, Calc, which is this basically Excel. Um, if I go File Save As, I can read and write um, XLS Excel uh, Excel templates. Um, the XLSX, which is their newer format, uh, the old format, XLS, etc., and then a bunch of other formats as well. And that's all completely free and installable. Well, it comes by default in Kubuntu, but uh, if not, you could just add that, you know, install it from your package manager. Um, increased security did that flexible and portable runs on various devices, multi-user support. Yes. Linux is multi-user out of the box. I can just come here and go to power session and switch user and switch to another user without having to, uh, you know, close out of here. I don't have to log out to log in as a different user. Um, and that's basically it. So security, privacy was a big one. They, they, they didn't, did they say privacy here? They did, I missed it. Um, but privacy is another big one. I would say the big ones are um, just increased performance. It's doing less work in the background. Um, and it's, you know, from the file system up, more optimized and, and going to run better on on, you know, older hardware and there are Linux distributions that are specifically made for older hardware um, that try to use as little RAM and as disk space as possible that are going to run super fast on, you know, a computer that's 10 years old. So I am just rambling on this. This really didn't do <laughs> that great of a job. Uh, What are the 10 top 10 reasons to run Linux? Security, free and open source, 
customization and control, community support, stability and reliability, flexible, flexibility and hardware compatibility, speed and performance, low system requirements, cross-platform compatibility, environmental benefits. So yeah, that's a, a little bit better list um, than what I got the first time. And by the way, this is running locally on my computer. Um, it's pretty easy to set Olama up and get that running. Um, and I could be offline right now if I just went and turned off my network. Well, let's see, I'm wired connection disconnect. And so now I'm disconnected. And if I asked it another question, uh, what operating system, you know, it reconnected. I would have to actually, um, turn that off. Let's just go airplane mode. You going to turn that off? Yep, there we go. Um, so what operating system would you run? So asking the AI what operating system it would run, and it says Ubuntu um, or Windows, and then for developers, Arch or Linux or uh, Mint, which are both Linux. Um, for gaming, SteamOS or Lubuntu, which are both Linux. And then for server administration, Red Hat or Debian, all Linux. So I will just exit out of that, say bye. Um, so that was running completely offline and I will, I'll make a video on how to set up um, Olama and run that if uh, you're interested. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know if you're thinking about running Linux. Oh, I wanted to show, um, I put a poll up on my channel and basically I've got a little bit of a response where um, I just ask, uh, do you plan on upgrading to a, a Windows 11? And um, yeah, 14% said yes, even if I have to buy a new computer. 33% said yes, uh, but only if I can upgrade my existing computer. Uh, no, I, I'm switching to Mac, 3%. No, I'm switching to Linux, 50%. So that's, that is awesome. Um, and if you are one of these people and run into any problems, let me know, uh, post a, post a question, you know, in the comments of this video or, uh, send me an email and I will try to answer all, all the questions I can. Um, and let's let's grow this community. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe so you don't miss future content. And uh, yeah, please comment and and let me know if you have any questions or if there's any video that you would like to see. Um, if you write an email or post a comment and have a question, let me know if you want me to make a video about it. If it's something that I can make, you know, content. Um, about and whether or not you would you know you're okay with me um quoting your question and attributing that to you i'd be happy to do that um anyway thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one